Welcome everyone, today I'm going to show you how to feel the weight of the object. So here we have different cubes, 1 kilogram, 10, 50, and 100. So if I grab 1 kilogram, I will not actually feel any weight because obviously it's light. But once I grab for instance 10 kilograms, you will see that my hand is actually going far away from my motion controller. And if I also have my 10 kilogram cube in my hand, and I try to grab it with my different hand, you will see that my hand will actually change. And if you go for 50 kg, you will see that I will barely have this cube. And if I go too far from my cube, you will see that my hand will snap back to my motion controller. And it also works with my 10 kg, so that if I try to do something with it really fast, you will see that my hand will actually snap back to my motion controller. And if I go to 100, I cannot even barely touch it. And basically, yeah. So as you've seen, this tutorial is only based on one handed grab so that you could feel the weight only with one hand and you could not support the second hand. The reason for this is that I haven't figured out how to do two hands, I've been sitting pretty decent amount of time, but in case I do figure out, I will post tutorial, maybe it will be on Patreon, maybe it will be on YouTube, I will see how it goes. The purpose of this video is just to give you the idea how everything is works, and if you know how to implement two-handed grab, you can try to spend some time and figure out how to make two-handed grab, but I haven't figured it out yet, so please give me some time, and I guess we can start the tutorial right now. If you haven't seen the last tutorial of how to to prevent hand from going through objects and that's the essential part for this tutorial please make sure you do see this tutorial and i have attached the link of your top right corner so make sure you watch it before jumping here so last tutorial you remember we had our hand and we had a reference point in our motion controller that we attach our hand to so now the logic behind taking the object and feeling its weight is that we are going to attach the object to the hand also using physics constraint so again we have our motion controller we have a reference point on it and we have our hand mesh like this, so that it prevented our motion controller going through the walls. For instance, here is the wall, and doesn't matter how I push my motion controller, my hand will stay on the same place. But now, to actually feel the weight of the object, what we'll have to do is that we'll have to attach an object to our hand that is attached to our motion controller, so that we felt the object's weight and it was stretching our hand from our motion controller. So for this purpose, I will go ahead and create another physics constraint. So physics constraint and make sure you will make it a shout of your motion controller left grip like this and i will call it grab physics constraint left and the only thing we have to change here is to put all of our angular limits to locked because we don't want our item in our hand to rotate in some weird directions we want it locked and that's all we have to do for our left hand now we have to go ahead and copy this physics constraint to our right hand so look for motion controller right grip and paste it inside the motion controller right grip. And I will rename it as grab physics constraint right. So now once we have constraint, we need to attach an object to this constraint. And the only place we can do it is in our try grip function grab component. We have to locate this function try grip here and double click on it. So first thing I want to do is that I actually want to go ahead to my try grab and in here I want to add two more inputs. So the first input will be our hand mesh like this and second input will be our physics constraint. So our hand mesh is of type skeletal mesh component and our physics constraint is of type physics constraint component. Afterwards, I will go ahead my VR pawn and as you will see, you will have those two inputs created here. So what I'm going to do, since I'm working with my grab left, I'm going to get my hand left skeletal mesh connected right here and physics constraint responsible for grabbing for our left hand is our grab physics constraint left. I will also connect it here. The same we can do for our right hand. So hand right mesh we connect here and physics constraint for our right grab we connect here. Afterwards, I will go back to my track grip function. So here I will go ahead and start with my physics constraint. So I'm going to promote it to a variable, but I'm not going to leave it like this. What I'm going to do is that now, once I have this physics constraint and let's actually go ahead and rename it. So physics constraint reference, I will have to go ahead and check if it's valid. So it's valid. Because once we hold an object, there is a possibility that you already hold it with other hand. Therefore, we will have to detach it. If it's valid, I'm going to create a branch and check if our physics constraint equals to our physics constraint reference. And connect this pin to here. In case it does not equal, meaning that we're already holding an object with a different hand, I will go ahead, take my physics constraint reference and break constraint. Like this. It's in case of false. And afterwards, I will plug it here. 
and the physics constraint reference input will be our physics constraint, like this. So in case our physics constraint reference equals to our physics constraint, meaning that that's the same hand, but it's not actually possible that it will happen, but still we need to take into consideration, we'll have to connect our true pin to here. So I will make some reroute nodes. And in case it's not valid, we're going to skip our branch and I'll connect it to here. So make sure you have the same code as I do right here. And afterwards, I'm going to promote my hand mesh. So promote to a variable like this. And for motion controller, I already have a variable and it's located right here. So I will go ahead, remove this motion controller reference and I'm going to take this node and I will put it right here. And I will connect my motion controller to here like this. And then I will connect this pin to here. So for purpose of our new grab type, I will go ahead and look for grab type. I will find this enumerator, click on it, and I'll add another grab type. And it will be of type weighted grab. And I will move it up to here, like this. So afterwards, you will see that in our grab component, our weighted grab has appeared. So in here, I will say just that it's held. And afterwards, I'll take my physics constraint reference so now we actually will constrain the object. And as you will see here, you will have component one and component two. The component one will be our hand. So I will get my hand, hand mesh, connected right here. And the socket will be our main bone since we've created a collision in previous tutorial only for our main bone. So what I will do, I will get held by hand. I will see if it equals two left. Since we can have two different hands, I'm going to select and I'll plug this Boolean variable to here. And in case it's true, it means that our hand is left. I'm going to write hand left. And in case it's false, I'll write hand right. And our component two is simply get attach parent. That's basically the static mesh we're grabbing, but we cannot connect it directly. What we'll have to do, we'll have to cast to static mesh component. So I will right click, convert to pure cast and connect our static mesh component to here. So afterwards now we have actually our hand attached to motion controller and we have a constraint that actually holds an object with our hand mesh. So basically object is attached to our hand. So now we can actually feel the weight. If the weight is too high, our motion controller is going to be further and further away from our hand. And we'll keep track of this difference between motion controller and our hand mesh. So once it exceeds some kind of threshold, our hand will just release the object and snap back to our motion controller. So for this purpose, uh, I've created a variable of type float. It's called physics grab threshold. And make sure you will set its default value to 30. And afterwards, we'll create our function and I will call it detach hand when threshold exceeded, like this. And here I will take my hand and I will take my motion controller reference. I will get their world location like this and here too. And I will get distance vector. So in case this distance is higher than our threshold, what we are going to do, we're just going to try release. And we need to use this function every actually tick to count every frame what distance we currently have between our motion controller and hand. So here I will set timer by function name and my function name will be my newly created functions name. We want it to repeat every 0 0.01 second and make sure you will select looping. So you can hit compile and save. Now we can go to our try release function. And once we release an object, we want to pause timer by function name. And again, we'll enter this function name here. And afterwards, I'll just set is held to false. Then what we want to do is that on our dropped, we want to clear the reference to our hand and we want to get our physics constraint reference and break constraint like this. So we can hit compile and save. So now we are basically done. All we have to do is just to make some visual components of our game. So I will go ahead to my cube and in here, in your grab component, make sure that your grab type is selected to weighted grab. And here in viewport, I will add a text render. That's just for visual purpose of seeing what is the mass of our cubes. I will select horizontal and vertical alignment to center. Then I'll bring this text a little bit forward and I'll make it smaller like this. So in cube, I'll create a variable and it will be mass. It will be of type float. And I will go to construction script and from grab component, I'll grab my grab component. I'll get grab type and I will see if it equals to our weighted grab. In case it does, I will get my mass variable. I will convert it to string. I will append space kg to see our numerical value in kilograms. And afterwards, I'm going to get my text render 
set text to the value from our append, like this, and connect it to true. You should hit compile and see that you have both lines here and here. If you don't have, it means your grab type is not weighted grab. And make sure that your mass here will be instance editable, like this. So now once I go to my level, I will see that I have 00 kg on my cube. So let's actually make it bigger. I will make like four of them. And now what do we have to do? We can click on our cube. Here, I will change the mass. So display mass will be 100 here. Here I'll have 50. Here I'll have 25. And here I'll have five. And afterwards, make sure that you will click on each of your cube and in your static mesh, in the mass property, you will set the mass you want. So here I have 100. Here, I will set it to 50. Here, I'll set it to 25. And here, I'll set it to one. And now, if you actually jump to your game, you will see that I have my motion controllers, but you will not see them. I just made them for the visual purpose. And let's start from one kilogram. So once I grab it, nothing is actually happening. And I can grab it in my other hand and my opposite hand will detach. So basically like this. Once I grab 25 kilograms, that's where the interesting part comes in. So as you will see now, I cannot pick up this cube fully. My hand is actually lower than motion controller. And if I exceed the distance of my threshold, my hand will snap back to motion controller. And the same way from here. Then 50 kilograms, so I can barely move it. And if we come to 100, I cannot even move it slightly. So basically it stays in one place. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope everything is working right. And if not, let me know in the comments. And I see you in the next tutorial.